Today, we're going to look at DDR4 versus DDR5 RAM. We're going to be going over some of the main differences between the two and which would be best for your PC in 2024. Howdy, my name is Timmy, here with Serious Power PC. Before we get too far into this video, if you wouldn't mind going ahead and leaving a like, as well as subscribing with the bell on, that way you get notified every single time we upload a brand new video. We're over 20,000 subs and we're constantly growing. Thank you so, so much for subscribing. If you have and if you haven't subscribed yet, consider subscribing. We're going to be making some gaming content coming soon that I assure you, you won't want to miss. Here at Sirius Power PC, we only use four brands of RAM. G-Skill, Team Group, Crucial, and Kingston RAM. So I figured to start off, we'll kind of give you a super, super quick, I mean super quick, uh, explanation of the history of RAM. So RAM started off as vacuum tubes that electrons and electrical signals would be controlled within those tubes to uh, create signals. And this is what RAM used to look like. That's pretty crazy, considering that this is what RAM looks like now. Then, things progress to where we have things like drum memory in the 50s and 60s, back when a computer, frankly, used to require its own building, which is just still so crazy to me that this used to house a computer. Like, that's actually crazy, and now we have them in micro ATX cases and and whatever the the mini PC cases are that like fit it into such a t it it's just crazy it's crazy to think about how far we've come with technology after drum memory magnetic core memory surpassed drum memory simply because magnetic core memory was more efficient then came around SRAM, thanks to semiconductors being produced. This allowed RAM to consume less power and cost a fraction of what it used to cost to manufacture and use RAM. Finally, we're on to modern technology DRAM. Now, DRAM sounds pretty similar to SRAM. What's the main difference? Are there differences? Yes, there are. SRAM typically uses six transistors to store one bit of information, whereas DRAM, which this is DRAM on the screen right now, usually only uses one transistor to store a bit of information. Therefore, DRAMs by design are much, much smaller and have a way, way higher density of storage that can be stored on them. Uh, DRAMs are also usually a lot cheaper than SRAMs, which if you've noticed a trend, when things get cheaper, smaller, and more efficient, generally that's when technology is advanced. And that's a flawless segue into today's topic, DDR4 RAM versus DDR5 RAM. We're going to go over to start off with the DDR4 RAM frequency caps as well as release dates and a bit of other information about them. So. DDR4 RAM. Mostly released in 2014, this RAM had higher capacity than DDR3 RAM and was just generally more efficient. Yet again, a leap in efficiency. You still see a lot of DDR4 RAM around today. In fact, I don't believe DDR5 RAM has yet to overtake DDR4 RAM as the mostly used RAM in systems today. DDR4 RAM finally surpassed DDR3 RAM in 2017 to become the most popular style of RAM. And you can kind of see why. I mean, DDR3 had a maximum capacity of 16 gigabytes of RAM per DIMM, which for those of you who are a bit dim like me, it just means stick of RAM. A DIMM is a stick of RAM. It's a uh, module that you would install into your computer. So DDR3 had a maximum of 16 gigabytes per stick. I'll refer to it as both dim and stick for the rest of the video. And DDR4 upgraded to a whopping 64 gigabytes per dim. 64 gigabytes of RAM on just one stick, as opposed to 16 with the previous generation. 
it's not hard to see why it replaced DDR3 RAM in 2017. DDR4 also had a lot higher frequency caps than DDR3. Now, we're going to take a look at DDR5 RAM. So, the first module of DDR5 RAM was released in 2020 by SK Hynix. DDR5 RAM outperforms DDR4 RAM both in frequency caps as well as bandwidth. And DDR5 RAM also utilizes onboard voltage regulators to achieve higher speeds than their DDR4 counterparts. DDR5 RAM pulls 1.1 volts as opposed to DDR4 RAM pulling 1.2 volts. But what about data rates? Well, DDR4 has a max data rate of 3.2 gigabytes a second, whereas the max data rate for DDR5 is 6.4 gigabytes a second, so doubling the speed of DDR4. The max transfer rate for DDR4 RAM is 3200 MTS, and the max transfer rate for DDR5 RAM is 7200 MTS, so over double the transfer rate from DDR4 to DDR5. So, which RAM is better for you in 2024? That is ultimately going to come down to your budget, how much you want to future-proof your PC. We made a whole video on that, top right hand of the screen right now, where we go a little bit more in-depth onto the topic of future-proofing. And if you have a lower budget, I mean, DDR4 RAM is nothing to sneeze at. It's still fast RAM. So consider your transfer rates, consider your data rates, consider how much RAM you want in your PC, how much RAM your budget will allow for, and if your budget allows for DDR5 or you want to spend a tiny bit more on your PC, then consider the DDR5 platform because eventually DDR5 is going to overtake DDR4 and DDR4 RAM, again eventually, will start to become less and less common. DDR5 will make your machine perform better than DDR4, but obviously that is going to be up to your budget and up to whether or not you want to future-proof your PC as much as possible. Again, check out our video. I'll leave it linked in the description down below. But anyways, guys, that is going to do it for this week's video. And if y'all want to see more videos like this, if y'all want to see more videos specifically on RAM, then comment in the comment section down below. Or if you have a suggestion for a video that you do want us to see, maybe a topic we haven't covered yet, then again, comment that in the comment section down below. Consider leaving a like if you enjoyed this video and subscribe if you're brand new because we upload new videos every single Saturday at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, so I'm sure you don't want to miss that. We'll also be uploading some gaming content coming very, very soon. We've already uploaded some, but we're working on getting our gaming content a bit more consistent, so that notification bell can obviously help you see our gaming content as soon as possible. Also, be sure to sign up for our affiliate program, because you can make anywhere from $50 to $100 to $150 per PC that you sell. We'll have a video in the top right hand of the screen right now that can give you some more information about our affiliate program. Thank you again for over 20,000 subscribers. That is actually insane that we were able to do that in such a short period of time. My name is Timmy, here with Sirius PowerPC, and be sure to tune in next week for a brand new video.